Assalamu alaikum everybody. The organism we are discussing today is responsible for causing plague, which is also known as black death. Let's welcome Yersinia pastis. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcome in the comments section. So have a cup of tea and let's get started. Yersinia pastis is a gram-negative rod. It's a small bacterium. It is not responsible for forming spores like some bacteria do. And it is also non-mortal because it has got no motility apparatus like a flagella. And it is a facultative intracellular bacterium, which means it can live both inside and outside the cell. And it resembles a safety pin. You know, might be wondering, safety pin? Yep, I'll explain that in morphology section, so stay tuned for that. Yersinia pestis is one of the most virulent bacteria known and has a strikingly low infectious dose of 50, i.e. 1 to 10 organisms are capable of causing the disease. This is how Yersinia pestis looks like under the microscope. It is red colored. Why? Because it's scrum negative. Yersinia pestis is oxidase negative. It is non-lactose fermenting and is responsible for causing bubonic plaque, also known as black death. This is the safety pin appearance of Yersinia pastis under the microscope. Yersinia has got three species. Yersinia pastis, the one we are discussing today, Yersinia enterocolitica, and Yersinia pseudotuberculosis. But before talking about Yersinia in much detail, we should know about the bacterial classification. Bacteria are further classified into spirochetes. They're also classified into acid fast based on acid fast staining. And there's an exception that is mycoplasma bacterium. And bacteria are also classified based on gram staining into gram positive. We're done with all of them. If you are interested, be sure to check out the channel. And gram negative. Gram negative are further subdivided into cocci that includes Neisseria, Neisseria gonorrhea, and Neisseria meningitis. And also into rods which are further subdivided into aerobic, like Pseudomonas, anaerobic, like Bacteroides and Fusobacterium, and facultative, which includes curved, like Campylobacter, Helicobacter, and Wiprio, and straight, which are further subdivided into enteric and related, which includes bacteria like E. coli, Enterobacter, Serratia, Calapsella, Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus. Interzoonotic, which includes Brucella, Francisella, Pasteurella, and Yersinia, the topic of today's video. And lastly, into respiratory, which includes Haemophilus, Bodytella, and Legionella. Lecture outline, we're done with the introduction of Yersinia pastis, we're done with the bacterial classification. Now we'll look at the morphology, habitat in transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. A huge thanks to Trulon for sponsoring today's video. Trulon is an awesome online exam preparation resource. This platform is built for medical students, nurses, and professionals. It helps you prepare for USMLE, COMLEX, and CLEX and other exams. Getting started is super easy. Just click on the link in the description. This is the beautiful website of Trulon. Check out their plans and choose the one you like. Hit buy now and use my special coupon code MADZOKHRUF at the checkout to get an exclusive discount. Login. Wait, what's that? Awesome. Trulon has introduced a new feature named Shared Tests. You can now share your tests with your peers with a shared test code. Isn't that amazing? This is Trulon's dashboard. For creating the test, click the create test right there. Give it a name, choose a time limit, select if you want a tutor and also the difficulty level. Once you're done, just hit start test and your test is ready to go. You can also search a question. As we're studying your senior pastors today, so I'll write it here and search. I'll select this one. And there you go. Read the question, select your answer, and see how you did. Collapse. We got it right. 
Trulan explains the answer very well, just like that. Look, what is this? This is Picmonic's video lecture in Yersinia Pestis. That's nice. So everybody, if you're interested in signing up on Trulan, click the link below and don't forget to use my special discount code MEDZUCHRUF at the checkout to get an exclusive discount on Trulan's plans. Sign up and enjoy. Morphology Yersinia pestis is a small gram-negative bacterium. It is rod-shaped and as I said in the introduction, it resembles a safety pin with a central clear area. Why is this so? Because it exhibits bipolar staining. As you can see in this picture, let me zoom in for you. It has stained from both the sides, but the central area is clear. Same goes for the safety pin. It is busy on both sides, but is empty from the center. That is why it resembles a safety pin. This is pink colored because it's gram negative. Structure. Yersinia pestis is an encapsulated bacterium. Its capsule is composed of polysaccharide protein complex. The capsule can be lost. Loss of capsule is accompanied by loss of virulence. Yersinia pestis is not responsible for forming spores and is also non-motile. This is how it looks like under the microscope. It is rod-shaped bacterium as you can see there. It is red colored because it's gram negative. We cannot see any motility apparatus like a flagella. Why? Yersinia pestis is not motile. Habitate. Hosts. Along with humans, there are certain animals that are termed as the hosts of Yersinia pestis. These include wild rodents, urban rats, and prey dogs. Prey dogs are not dogs. These are a type of rats. This is how they look. Transmission. Yersinia pestis is transmitted by a vector among animals and humans. Vector is a flea, which is shown in this picture. This flea carries the Yersinia pestis. So now the question is, how do humans acquire infection? Humans acquire infection by being bitten by the vector, the flea, this one. And there's also a condition that is pneumonic plague. And its transmission occurs by a respiratory droplet. So, this is termed as respiratory droplet transmission in case of pneumonic plague. Pathogenesis. There are two cycles in the life cycle of Yersinia pestis. First one is enzootic, that is also called a silhouette cycle. And the second one is urban cycle. Let's start talking about enzootic or silhouette cycle. This cycle consists of transmission among wild rodents by fleas. Peridogs are also the reservoirs. Rodents are relatively resistant to disease. Most are asymptomatic. Humans are the accidental hosts. And as I've mentioned earlier, the infection is transmitted by being bitten by a flea. That is the part of the silhouettic cycle. Now comes the urban cycle. It consists of transmission of bacteria among urban rats, the reservoirs, with the rat flea as vector. This cycle predominates during the times of poor sanitation, when rats proliferate and come in contact with fleas in silhouettic cycle. Now we are done with both the cycles, the enzootic or silhouettic cycle and the urban cycle. But we do not know what's happening inside the vector, the flea. The events within the flea are fascinating as well as essential. The flea ingests the bacteria while taking a blood meal from a bacteremic rodent. A thick biofilm containing many organisms forms in the upper gastrointestinal tract that prevents any food from proceeding down that tract of the flea. This blocked flea then regurgitates the organisms, the Yersinia pestis, into the bloodstream of the next animal or human it bites. After the bite, Yersinia pestis is inside the humans. Let's talk about the events in the humans. The Yersinia pestis, inoculated at the time of bite, spread to the regional lymph nodes, which become swollen and tender. And these swollen lymph nodes are the buboes that have led to the name bubonic plaque. This is how a swollen lymph node looks like. Here we've got the swollen axillary lymph node. Yersinia pestis can reach high concentrations in the blood, 
causing bacteremia, and it can disseminate to form abscesses in many organs. Yersinia pestis is also responsible for causing pneumonic plaque, which looks like that. The endotoxin-related symptoms, including disseminated intravascular coagulation and cutaneous hemorrhages, probably were the genesis of the term Black Death. Yersinia pestis has several factors that contribute to its virulence. First one in the list is capsule, the enveloped capsular antigen called F1, which protects against phagocytosis. The second and third ones are endotoxin and exotoxin. They are responsible for causing inflammation and spreading the infection. Fourth one in the list is V and W antigens. These are the proteins that allow the bacteria to grow and survive intracellularly. The last one is really interesting. It's not a single factor. It's a group of virulence factors, collectively called YOPS, Y-O-P-S, which is the Yersinia outer proteins. These are injected into human cell via type 3 secretion systems and inhibit phagocytosis and cytokine production by macrophages and neutrophils. For example, one of the YOPS proteins, YOPJ, is the protease that cleaves two signal transduction pathway proteins required for induction of tumor necrosis factor synthesis. This inhibits the activation of the human's host defenses and contributes to the ability of your senior pastors to replicate rapidly within the infected individual. Clinical findings. Bubonic plaque, which is the most frequent form, begins with pain and swelling of the lymph nodes, draining the site of the flea bite, and there are certain systemic symptoms like high fever, myalgias, and prostration. The affected nodes enlarge and become exquisitely tender. The buboes are an early characteristic finding. Septic shock and pneumonia are the main life-threatening subsequent events. Pneumonic plaque can arise either from inhalation of an aerosol or from septic emboli that reach the lungs. What happens in black death? Black cutaneous hemorrhagic lesions destroy blood vessels. Lab diagnosis. We'll need samples of serum, pus, and blood. We'll then go for microscopy and on gram staining, your senior pestis appears to be gram negative because it's pink colored. It's rod shaped. Bipolar gymza or Waysen stain reveals the typical safety pin appearance of the Yersinia pestis better than the gram stain. Yersinia pestis is grown on a medium of chocolate agar for a 72 hour time period at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. And this is how it looks. Its colonies are circular, and this is how it looks like under the microscope after gram staining. We'll go for certain other tests for diagnosing the Yersinia pestis. Fluorescent antibody staining. This test can be used to identify Yersinia pestis in the tissues. A rise in the antibody titer to the envelope antigen can be useful retrospectively. Treatment. The treatment of choice is the combination of streptomycin and a tetracycline, such as doxycycline. All those streptomycin alone can be used. Levofloxacin can also be used. There is no significant antibiotic resistance. All right, let me tell you something really cool. The infection caused by Yersinia pestis, the bubonic plaque, or we call it bubos or black death progresses rapidly. So treatment should not wait for the results of bacteriologic culture or other tests. Incision and drainage of bubos are not usually necessary. Prevention. Prevention of plague involves controlling the spread of rats, avoiding both flea bites and contact with dead wild rodents. A patient with plague must be placed in strict isolation, quarantine for 72 hours after antibiotic therapy is started. A vaccine consisting of formalin-killed organisms provides partial protection against bubonic but not pneumonic plaque. All right, everybody, let's have a quick recap. The organism we discussed today is Yersinia pestis, which is responsible for causing bubonic plaque, which is also known as black death. Mode of transmission. Animal to animal or animal to human via vector. That's slave. Hosts include humans, 
wild rodents, prairie dogs. Diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy, gems are always in stain, and culture. For treatment, streptomycin, doxycycline, and levofloxacin are used. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. And if you want to connect with me on my social media, I've got my Instagram and Twitter, both with the handle Medzokhrov. And I'll see you soon in the next video. Till then, Assalamu Alaikum.